Well, hello. Welcome to Jesus Saves, an online church for you, the believer. Hallelujah. Praise be to you. My name is Troy Rockers, and I'm here to present the good news of Jesus Christ to you. Hallelujah. He loves you, and he desires a relationship with you as well as the Father does. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, if this is your first time here, welcome. This is an online church, so uh, we will worship the Lord through some psalm music. We will take communion. And there will be a sermon for you, as well as at the end of the service, I will pray for you actively, however the Holy Spirit leads me, okay? So, please log in into our chat room if you're on the Sunday 10 a.m. service. That's when chat is available for you. You can um, talk to someone, have prayer prayed over you through the chat room. And if you receive a miracle through this ministry, please reach out to us with an email, a testimony. There's power in your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, last week... I spoke on the parable of the sower and the seed, and I think that particular um, parable illustrates how the devil's going to attack you and me. Amen? So it's a good understanding of, you know, ways that he tries to draw us from the Lord. And you can review that. You can go check that out on our YouTube channel, because I have them broken up separate there, the sermons as well as the uh, active prayers. So you can just catch the sermon if you only have 15, 20 minutes in your day. I'll also put this one up there as well. So today, this week, I am talking to you about loving your neighbor. And that's what the Lord put in my heart to uh, speak to you about today. So I'm going to open up with prayer. And there's notes for you right there. As well as we will have communion, like I said. So gather up your wine, water, juice, and bread so you have those later. So let's go ahead and open with prayer. And I'll give a brief intro and then we'll bring some psalm music. And then I'll bring the meat of the sermon. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Almighty God of heaven and earth. Thank you, Father, for all things. Thank you, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, for making a way to the Father. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, O Lord Jesus. Thank you for writing my name in heaven and everyone out here listening. If they're a believer already, thank you for writing their name in heaven, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray for those that do not know you, Jesus. I pray the scales will be removed off their eyes now in Jesus Christ's name and cast to the abyss that the enemy put over them so that they... May hear this word and it may grow root in their heart, Father. I pray they be saved in Jesus' name, Father God. I cry out for the church, Lord, everywhere, to be mighty workers in your kingdom and love in the, and to walk in the love of thy neighbor. In Jesus' name, I pray for that, Father God. I ask you to fill me now with the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost fire for this sermon, Lord. May I get out of the way and use me. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pull off every veil and scale off everyone out there. In Jesus' name, amen. For your glory, Jesus, not mine. Amen. Well, love your neighbor. You know, Jesus gave two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, he said in Mark 12. So, you can check uh, the beginning of that scripture out. Mark 3, 12, 31 states, and the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. So, do you love your neighbor? First of all, do you love yourself? Think about that one. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Do you love yourself or you dislike qualities and features of yourself? You shouldn't. God made you. He, he crafted you. He, held, he, he, you know, he took the chisel to the rock and made you. You're made out of dust, right? He made you perfect in his own image. No matter you know, what people may say about you, he loves you. He made you, right? So first we need to love ourselves, right? But loving our neighbor is very important. We have to love our neighbor. You know, we are ambassadors of Christ if you're a born-again Christian. And we are to be doing his duties and his uh, works on this earth for him and his glory. And was Jesus not love? You know, he was nothing but love. He, the only person he got upset with, if you look through the scriptures, are the religious people. He went in and ran out all those people in the temple selling goods, peddling things in there. And it's supposed to be my house is called a house of prayer. So we are now the temple of God because the Holy Spirit lives in us, right? So we should be a house of prayer. Amen. Amen. So do you love your neighbor? That's the topic today. I'll be back after we uh, listen to some psalm music. Let's worship the Lord with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Usher in the Holy Spirit. Ask for the filling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll be back with the meat of the sermon right after this. Rejoice in the Lord, all you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord. 
guitar with a harp Make a melody to him with an instrument Of ten strings Sing to him a new song Play skillfully with a shout of joy Righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap, he lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. The inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven, he sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually, he considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety, neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The 
Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Hallelujah. I hope you praise the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you are ready to receive the meat of this sermon on loving your neighbor. In Mark 12, 31, it says, In the second commandment, Jesus said this, and the second commandment, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So do you love your neighbor? Well, let's look at Luke 10, 29. It begins there, and it runs through 37. Let's look at who is thy neighbor. So this is a particular man wanting to justify himself, talking to Jesus. And here it is. I'm going to bring you this scripture. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by a chance, now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. So here we see in this context, the scripture, how two men didn't help the poor wounded man that was beaten up by the thieves, right? Who were they? They were the Levite and the priest. Both supposed to be holy men of God. Both supposed to be representing God, should, because they were the chosen people of God, right? The Hebrews. But we don't know why they didn't help the man. We do know, though, in the scriptures that, you know, the there were so many laws that, you know, you couldn't touch an unclean person or you were moved, you know, you couldn't enter the, into the temple for so many days. And so maybe that was part of their thought process. Um, the Samaritan people, by the way, were half Jew, half um, other the Jews married into other people around that they weren't supposed to, like the Philistines, the Canaanites, things like that. And so the Samaritans were half Jew, half other race, so to speak. And, and they were looked down upon by the uh, Levites, by the priests, by the Jewish nation. In fact, they didn't talk to them or have dealings with them, so to speak. So it's interesting here how Jesus shows that you know, God's chosen people didn't have compassion on that man didn't have mercy on him, didn't show love to him. Yet here, a half-Jew, so to speak, um, we don't know exactly, but the Samaritans were intermarried people with other races. He had compassion. So, you know, once you're a believer in Christ, we should have compassion on other people and show mercy to them, right? Because that's what Jesus said at the very end of that scripture, Right? Well, I'm going to go to the verse exactly. Verse 33, it says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Do you have compassion for other people? That's the beginning of love. You have to have compassion for someone to show them love, do you not? I'm not talking about, you know, love for your spouse, love for your children. I'm talking about the agape love, to love all things God created. To love other men and women, even though they're not of Christ yet. Do you have that compassion in you? You know, do you have the, enough compassion to pray for those people who are, you know, doing evil things in this world, supporting evil things in this world? You know, your prayer, your intercessory prayer is more powerful than anything. You must love on them. You know, I know it's difficult. It's not easy for me. You know, I see evil people in this world, and that's just like, you know, I want to just, you know, at times, you know, I want to say, Lord, remove them, <laughs> but you, we can't. We are to exhibit the love of Christ. Instead, you should say, Lord, save them. Change their mind. Change their thought process, Lord. Send holy angels to minister the gospel to them, right? 
We are to love all people. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm not saying that at all. But the first and foremost thing in that love is compassion. Have compassion on people. Have compassion on the lonely, on the, on the homeless, on those that are bound by the enemy. You know, because if they're not a believer, then they are bound, the scriptures say, right? They're blinded by the enemy. That's what the scriptures say. So we need to have compassion first and foremost. And then second, we need to have mercy. That's what Jesus said in verse 37. And he said, he who showed mercy on him is what that, excuse me, Jesus didn't say that. The uh, man who wanted to justify himself said that. And then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So Jesus confirmed that. It was correct answer, the correct answer. We need to have mercy. Hallelujah. Do you have mercy on others? Do you fear for other people's souls going to hell? I mean, there's some evil, wicked people in this world. You know, look to the media. I mean, I don't want to name names, but, you know, there's so much going on right now. The Lord is exposing so much darkness and corruption in our government, and he's using um, people that don't want, well, how should I phrase this? He's using the President of the United States, for one thing. He's using President Trump. And if you're a Democrat, I'm sorry, but that's just a fact. I have always voted independent, um, but obviously now anymore I can't vote independent. I can only vote Republican because they support life. They're pro-life. Everybody running for office in the Democratic Party are want to, want to abort babies and support LGBTQ, and I don't because I believe in the Bible. Amen, and you should too. But anyway, make a long story short, those people opposing the president, exposing this darkness, um, are you praying for them? Do you have mercy on their souls? Because obviously they're bound by the enemy. You know, I have family members, which I do not understand, who claim to be Catholic or Christian. Catholicism is a form of Christianity. Who vote for people that murder babies, that are pro-abortion. Doesn't make sense to me. But I still pray for them to come into the light. I intercede for them. That's all we can do is be the light. Right? And love. Do you have compassion on everyone out there throughout your entire day? I know it's a struggle. It's not easy. The only way we can have that compassion is to have Jesus in us. Right? Have the Holy Spirit in us. And then allow that to come forth. The only way that can come forth is if our flesh is crucified and out of the way. Right? To let the fruit of the Spirit up. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. The fruits of the Spirit only come from the Spirit. Amen? So, to be in the Spirit, we have to be in the Word of God. We have to be praying. We have to be worshiping the Father, right? And Jesus, on a regular, daily basis. If not, then the flesh comes up. And the flesh does evil things, doesn't it? It wants to lust. It wants to have fits of wrath and anger. It wants to be jealous and contentious. Strife. The flesh is not good, is it? You know, there's writings in the scripture that say that the uh, spirit is at enmity with the flesh, or the flesh is at war with the spirit. They oppose one another because our flesh was born in sin, amen, ever since the fall of Adam and Eve. Only one man was righteous and holy, and that's Christ. Amen? What's interesting about loving your neighbor is this, isn't a, this is not a New Testament teaching. This goes clear back into Leviticus 19.18. It says, You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So this commandment was given... Through the Mosaic commandment, through the Moses commandment, through those commandments, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The Ten Commandments, you know, if you look at them, they're summed up by stating this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Obviously, the first one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, is, is wrapped up in the first two commandments, if I recall. I don't think it goes into the third. I have to review the order of them. But the rest of them are all about loving your neighbor. You know, not murdering, not coveting, not lying. You know, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to do those things. Who's your neighbor? 
Who is your neighbor? It's your brother and sister in Christ for sure, right? But it's also by looking at the scriptures in Luke 10, it's someone you don't know. It's someone who may be lost in the world, doesn't know Christ. In other words, anyone out there, every human being is your neighbor. Yes, you have neighbors that live near you, but it's, he's not talking about them only. He's talking about anyone. So the first thing to loving our neighbor is to have compassion on them. Do you have compassion on others? Do you love yourself? First of all, I guess. That's where we need to start, I guess, if you think about it. We need to love ourselves. Because if we don't love ourselves, how, how can we love our neighbor? Do you love yourself? You should. If you don't, there's something behind that. There's a spirit of self-rejection. You know, there's word curses on you that were spoken over you when you were young, breaking you down, making you not feel so good. You know, maybe you maybe you had a parent who was, you know, a parent that was overbearing and dominant and wanted to see you excel, but didn't do it in a loving way. As an example, you got to be on a report card and you're, you're, parent may have said, oh, good job, but you can do better, you know, and that gave a little rejection to you because you've got to be, you know, it's a passing grade, right? It's just not an A. Nothing wrong with that, but maybe your parents, you know, wanted you to get straight A's for some odd reason. Well, understand this, your Father in Heaven loves you, and that's the most important thing. Our parents on this earth aren't perfect. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. So we're all going to make mistakes, and they can make mistakes too. And the, the key here is forgiving them and moving on so you can love yourself. Hallelujah. Forgive that other person that spoke rejection over you, that gave you word curses. Renounce and denounce the word curses out loud. Break them off you in Jesus' name. And then accept yourself as you are, perfect, made in the image of God. Hallelujah. He made you perfect. You know, every snowflake is different that falls from the sky. Did you know that? Every snowflake is different. And there's none that are the same. Every fingerprint on every human is different. God is a creator. And he created us individually, each one separate and different from each other. We're all different. So don't compare yourself to others. But know that God made you perfect as he wanted you. Accept that. Accept that. So your nose isn't the way you want it. Well, it's the way God wanted it. Think about that. So your eyes aren't blue. Your hair is not blonde. God made you just perfect with your brown eyes and brown hair. And he's got a spouse for you out there. Amen? Made for you. So the first and foremost thing of loving your neighbor is to love yourself, right? And then have compassion on others. Have mercy on them. Do you have that now? If you don't, why not? Why don't you? It's a question for you to ponder. It's a rhetorical question. Why don't you? Is it because your heart broke still? Is it because you were a fat kid and nobody liked you and you have rejection on your self-image? Then you need delivered and healed. Jesus can heal your heart. We minister to people all the time across the globe, deliverance and inner healing. And Jesus heals our heart. He restores them, makes them new. You have a new outlook on your life. You see you how you how you see yourself as Jesus sees you. Maybe you were the shortest one in the class and you got picked on. Maybe you were a tall, gigantic woman growing up, young woman, and, and you were made fun of for that too. Um, you know, kids are mean. They can be, right? So oftentimes... Not loving ourselves stems from wounds from the past in our childhood. And then they continue to fester in us because there's a devil that came right in with that broken heart of yours. And he continues to remind you of those things. Well, Jesus can deliver you and he does. Hallelujah. First and foremost, you should be delivered so that you can love others easier. But that's not an excuse, by the way. Even though you may have had a horrible childhood, even though, you know, you may not love yourself. Jesus doesn't say here in the scripture to deal with those things first. He calls us to love our neighbor, no matter where you're at. So you should be loving your neighbor, even if you have all this brokenness. But I'm here to tell you today, it's much easier to love your neighbor if you can love yourself. Now, 
On the other side of that, people can go too far and have pride, have conceitedness, have arrogance because they love their self too much. They love their self so much, they can't love their neighbor. Are you one of those people that think you're better than everybody else? Thus, you can't give compassion to others because you look at them as some weak individual that doesn't deserve your time or attention? That's wrong, by the way. You need to humble yourself if that's you. Have compassion on everyone. Humble yourself. We are here to serve men and women of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you serving others by loving them? Having compassion on them? Having mercy on them? Are you giving your coat to the poor, to the homeless, if they need it? The shirt off your back to someone who's shirtless? Do you have that kind of compassion? Are you able to open up your wallet and give to those less fortunate? God mandates for us to give. You know, He says, you know, you've robbed me from your tithes and offerings in the scriptures. Part of love is opening up your wallet. Do you have the trust in the Lord to refill that wallet? Do you trust him to refill it? Well, if you're doing the first two commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbors yourself, he's going to take care of you. Right? He feeds the birds of the air. He clothes the lilies of the field. Right? He provides all things for you and I. We just have to trust him. So do you love those who are unlovable? Do you love the pedophile? That's a tough one. Do you love the rapist? Do you love the abortionist? Do you love the homosexual? Do you love them? Do you have compassion on them? Do you show mercy to them? Do you present the gospel to them? That's the only thing that can change them. Do you realize that? We're to love all people, but, you know, we have people out there who are walking in agreement with the devil. They're doing the deeds of Satan. Understand, the person themselves is being driven by Satan. So we need to love the individual. Hate the crime. Don't, don't um, love what they're doing. Don't agree with it that it's right. Okay? The lying, the stealing, the murdering of innocent children, the perversion, the homosexuality. We don't agree with that, do we? Amen? But we love the individual. Present the gospel to them. Intercede. Pray to the Father that they'd be saved. That they'd come out of that bondage. Because that's nothing. That's all it is, is bondage to the enemy. Amen? They're bound by Satan. So we need to love. The church needs to exhibit the love of Christ. At all levels. You know, in this political environment we're in today in the United States of America, where or this country is so divided, it seems like, between party lines, we need to love our brothers and sisters in the Lord no matter what they think, you know, politic wise. And we need to pray for those who are bound by Satan. Hallelujah. Show compassion, have mercy. Amen? Amen? It starts with yourself. Do you love yourself? Do you still have, do you have self-rejection? Do you have low self-esteem? Do you have insecurities in who you are in Christ, especially? You know, rejection, fears. Love yourself, first of all, first and foremost. And if you can't, reach out to us. We're here for you. We love you. We want to help you on your path. We want to help on your Road with the Lord, your path with the Lord, your destiny. Amen. And if you need deliverance and inner healing, reach out to us. We will we will minister to you as the Lord leads us. We follow his leading on that area. The Lord will tell us if you're not ready. He'll say, they're not ready. They need to do this, this, and this. They need to learn more about spiritual warfare. They need to start reading the word of God. They need to be baptized. You know, we've had a lot of people reach out to our ministry over the years and sometimes the Lord doesn't allow us to minister to a person until they do certain things because they're not right with him in some area. They haven't forgiven someone. They haven't been baptized yet. They aren't, you know, they want a what's called a drive-through deliverance. 
They want to go through the fast food uh, Arby's or McDonald's and get their quick deliverance and make everything hunky dory. Well, it doesn't work like that. You got to be prepared to walk it out. That's a whole other story. But anyway, Jesus loves you. Do you have love for your neighbor? Do you love the brokenhearted? Do you love the lost? Well, we're required to do, to do those things. So I would implore you to love wherever you go, today and tomorrow. Be the light of Christ. Be an ambassador for Jesus. Amen. Let's take communion and honor the Lord through that. He said to partake of him until he returns. So I'd like to do that now. If you'd raise your cup and your bread that you have there at home, I'll bless them. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, every cup becomes the blood of Jesus Christ. And every bread becomes the body of Jesus Christ now in Jesus' name. The Last Supper, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take, eat, the body of Christ, remembering that he went to a cross for you and died a horrible death for you on that cross. supper was ended he took the cup and said this is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant shed for the sins of many so as you drink the blood of Jesus remember that it was his sacrifice on that cross that created the new covenant his blood shed took the place of you on that cross so drink the new covenant thank you Jesus for your precious blood I'll be back after we worship the Lord with some psalm music, with some active prayer. So be prepared to be delivered for intercession. However the Holy Spirit leads me, we will pray. Amen. I'll be right back.
Hallelujah. I hope you praise the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you're ready to receive now some deliverance. That's what the Lord moved me to do uh, through prayer. I'm supposed to pray deliverance prayers today. Last week, uh, two weeks, I believe, in a row, it was the intercessory prayers. And uh, the two or three before that were deliverance. So we're back to deliverance. Specifically, I'm supposed to pray for inner healing. So if you have a broken heart, now is the time to give it to the Lord. He can heal that heart. And there's more on our Armory channel on deliverance and inner healing. And I uh, hope to have some time available to uh, start getting some other videos up for you in that area. So uh, you can walk out your deliverance and freedom all your life. Amen. So I'm going to begin to pray. Uh, you may need a Bible with you. It's kind of handy to have it during deliverance. You may want to place it on your heart. And because, uh, you know, Jesus is the word of God. So when you rest the Bible on your heart, you're literally resting, you're literally putting Jesus Christ on your heart. Amen? Think about that. He is the Word of God in the flesh, incarnate. So resting that Bible there, you're putting Jesus on it. And those broken pieces can be healed by Him. Amen? Hallelujah? Hallelujah. I'm going to begin to pray. And uh, now as I pray deliverance prayers, you may burp or yawn, or you may feel something coming up. Don't hold it down. Burp, yawn. It's something leaving you, and you don't want it in you. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Praise and honor and glory go to you and you alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for writing your names in heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise be to you. Praise be to you. Praise be to you, my King of kings, Lord of lords. Where there are two more gathered in prayer, you're in the midst. I ask you to come in the midst of us now, Jesus, between me and all these people online, Father God. I ask you to be here. I ask you to, to, to deliver them. You are the deliverer, Father God. I ask you to heal her broken heart, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Repeat after me, saying say in the name of the Lord Jesus. I renounce and denounce all of my ancestors' sins. I ask forgiveness on their behalf. I repent on their behalf. All the way back to Adam and Eve on both sides of my bloodline. In Jesus' name, I now break those generational curses which came upon me for my ancestors' sins. They are now broken in Jesus' name. Continue to repeat after me. I also repent, Father God, for my sins. I know you've washed me in your blood, Jesus. And I am now held sinless in the Father's eyes. I now repent of any daily sins, such as gossip, such as slander, such as evil thoughts. Right? Those things may come to you. You need to repent of them. And I also break the curse off of me for these sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, good. What we just did there was we cleaned up some stuff so that now you can have deliverance. Because if you're in sin, if you have generational curses on you, that devil won't leave. But now he has to leave, amen. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bind the strong man and every person out here listening in Jesus Christ's name. You're bound by the blood of Jesus. I divide soul and spirit right now in Jesus' name on every person out here. Well, heart parts move into the light with Christ, and every devil and demon, I separate you from their hearts now. In Jesus' name, you cannot have it. The blood of Jesus Christ separates you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every broken heart out here that has self-rejection. Jesus loves you. He made you. He created you. God created you in His image. You're perfect. I pull those lies off of you and word curses now, and I cast them to the abyss in Jesus' name. Every word curse. Every thought curse. It's pulled down off of you now that brought in self-rejection. Every lie spoken over you by your mother, father, friends, teachers, anybody else who is over you in authority. I break those word curses off of you now, all the way back to your conception in Jesus' name. Broken by the blood of the Lamb. Now, heart parts in Jesus' name. Receive this. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in Jesus' name. 
You're made in the image of Almighty God in Jesus' name. You're perfect in His eyes. Hallelujah. Now, broken heart parts, come forward to Jesus. Let Him take the rest of your pain. Give Him your sorrow and your sadness now. Come forward to Jesus and give Him all your sorrow and sadness, all your self-rejection. If there's any part of your body that you didn't like in the past, I declare it is washed in the blood of Jesus now and perfect because he made you. Hallelujah. The lies that somebody put in you about those things, about those things of your image that you didn't like, I pulled them down and cast them to the abyss now. All mind control spirits are bound as well in Jesus' name. Every tentacle on mind control I cut off now in Jesus' name. All lies put in them, I pull out of their minds and cast the abyss in Jesus' name. Heart parts, come forward to Jesus. All the way, all the way, come out. Just go with Jesus now. Let him take you and heal you. In Jesus' name, come out and go with him. He'll take you to heaven. He'll heal you there. He'll bring you back and restore you to the core, healed and whole. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit speak. I loose the love of Jesus upon these heart parts. I loose the love of Jesus upon these heart parts in Jesus' name. I loose the love of Jesus on these heart parts in Jesus' name. Accept his love. Accept his love. He died for you on the cross. He loves you with an everlasting and unending love. Accept it now. Go ahead and put a voice to that. Say, Jesus, I accept your love. I accept your love. I accept the love of the Father. I break all word curses off of you that your biological, your earthly dad put on you. I break those word curses now off of you in Jesus' name. They're broken. Those weapons come out from those word curses and they're cast to the abyss in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit speak. All the generational heart parts I loose from these people right now, every generational mind and heart part, you come out of them, go to the Lord Jesus, you live your life. I loose them, every devil and demon, let go of them in Jesus' name. They come out and go to the Lord Jesus now. Every generational mind heart part, loosed, go to the Lord Jesus now. Come out in Jesus' name. You cannot dwell in them any longer. In Jesus' name, go. Just go now. Go to the Lord Jesus. He'll take you where you belong. Go in Jesus' name. Now, heart parts who were wounded, you feel better? Become one with the core now in Jesus' name. Healed and restored. Become one with the core. Healed and restored. Heart, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And every spirit is now bound that was holding on to that brokenness. I break your legal right. I break the curse. And I command you out of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go to the abyss now that held their heart. Come out self-rejection. Come out self-hate. Come out rejection. Come out lying spirits. Come out spirits of fear. Come out spirits of distrust. Distrust, go in Jesus Christ's name. Get out, mind control, you're bound. Go to the abyss in Jesus Christ's name. All spirits of Jezebel, get out in Jesus Christ's name. Rejection, go to the pit in Jesus' name. Ahab, go to the pit in Jesus' name. Every devil and demon that held their heart and mind right now, sorrow and sadness, you're bound also. You go to the abyss in Jesus Christ's name. Come out now in the mighty name of Christ. Go in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Come out of the saints now and go to the abyss. Never return. I close that generational door. All generational structures, doors, seeds are burned up with Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' name. That allowed you into their lives. In Jesus' name, be healed, heart. Be healed, heart. Be healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for healing my heart. Hallelujah. Praise him. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Refill your soul with his love. Hallelujah, Jesus. I loose the love of Jesus on you. The joy and the peace now be loosed from heaven in Jesus' name upon you. I wash you in the blood of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to you. Thank you for healing my heart. Thank you for the deliverance. Every weapon come out of their mind in Jesus Christ's name right now. Every weapon, residual weapon, I pull out and cast the pit in Jesus Christ's name that the spirits left behind. They all come out. All recording devices are broken in Jesus' name. Dismantled in Jesus' name. All the lies go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to you. 
Well, praise the Lord today for your deliverance and inner healing. And if you received inner healing and deliverance today, please reach out to us. Give us a testimony. There's power in that. I would like to pray a blessing over you. If you'd open your hands to Father and just receive. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Yeshua's name, Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if this ministry has been a blessing for you, if you would consider sending us a love offering or tithe, we'd appreciate that. Please pray about that to the Lord. We need your support financially so we can do the works of the gospel into other countries. Amen. We have mission trips we'd like to go on. In Jesus' name, I'll be back next week. God bless.